Hi everybody. This is a continuation of the vertical stabilizer. So in the previous video I mocked up the entire uh, uh, vertical stabilizer as you can see sitting on the desk. Uh, before I get to tearing that down I'm going to go ahead and start pulling all the parts for the next chapter, chapter 7, which is the rudder. Very interesting chapter. We're going to learn a lot there. Uh, a lot of notes to selves. So I'm gonna uh, once I'm done pulling the parts here, I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this uh, the, the stabilizer and break it down into normal parts, and then do the usual complete deburring of all the holes and edges, etc. If only I could click over this fast in real time. So there's a couple of interesting holes. Uh, what you have to do, go through is final drill all of the main frame holes, which are all uh, 1 8 of an inch, or roughly uh, number 30 drill bit. And there's a couple of spots where you actually need to have a 12 inch bit. You can't really get to it, well at least with my big fat drill, you can't really get to it. So if you just saw, uh, I was getting up underneath the front spar by using a 12 inch uh, number 30 drill bit really comes in handy when you need a long extension into an uh, inaccessible place that you really can't get to with the usually the fat nose of a either uh, air drill or cordless drill. Now I'm unwrapping all of the vinyl and cleaning the parts. Uh, I do love the vinyl that sits on top. It's, sometimes it's a little bit of a pain because when they do a lot of forming it winds up breaking the vinyl and then you wind up having to pull it off in strips. It's not a big deal. I also find it useful to bunch up in my hand and use it to either uh, pull cat hair off of my clothing. <laughs> Basically I can use it as a lint roller. So yeah, so that spar doubler is very thick. It's 0.125 inches, which is an eighth of an inch. Uh, I'm sorry, eighth of an inch. Uh, yeah, no, that's right, eighth of an inch. And it's, I mean, it's pretty thick. And you need to deburr the edges so that the uh, original stamp edge is gone and that there's a slight overround on all sides. So as you see here, I've switched cameras. Now I'm on the other side of the workbench and I'm using a combination of a bench grinder and a Scotch Bright one inch wheel mounted on my drill press. Now I found the Scotch Bright wheel, the one inch. It, it it does a very good job of finishing and a little bit of material removal, but it doesn't really work a lot off of that very thick piece of aluminum. I wound up eating more of the one inch wheel than I did of uh, taking metal off. So for that, I kind of really went back and relied upon the uh, bench grinder there. No, I do not have a scotch Bright wheel for the bench grinder. I've read that everyone that has one of those loves them. Uh, it's not technically my bench grinder, so I really can't uh, change the wheels out. I, I think I might. I'm, I'm just going to ask the guy. He won't have a problem with it. Plus, the 6-inch scotch Bright bench grinder wheels are about $60 to $65. Uh, I got I hope they're worth it. So here I am have my countersink tool mounted in my drill press and I am countersinking which I'm trying to show in slow-mo there uh, countersunk rivets for the front of the main uh, spark doubler. So now just for the most of the rest of this video I've gone ahead and I'm kinda jumping ahead a little bit and I'm working on a little bit of the rudder. So those are stiffeners that uh, will be back riveted to both of the rudder skins you have to separate them out and then of course do the standard deburring. Now 
I have realized that most of the work I do, well, I'd say probably half the time, it's probably deburring, cleaning metal. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's very cathartic. It's good for contemplation. Kind of mindless. I can just do it for hours. But then I realized that I would like to actually finish this aircraft sometime in this uh, decade. I'm currently researching ways to uh, increase this. So there's Judy. That is Judy. Judy is the treasurer of our flying club here in Oakland. Sweet lady. She really wants to help me out. I've had a lot of members actually volunteer to come by and help. It's kind of nice. Give me a way to see one, do one, teach one as a teaching method. I haven't gotten to do the teach one yet, so... Yes, the filing. I believe I'm just going to continue this for the remainder of this video. Doesn't <laughs> this isn't really the vertical stabilizer, but it's all part of the same process. Uh, in a second here, you'll see a friend of mine, uh, Victor. He's also in our flying club. He built himself an RV-7. Very nice man. Always comes by, has great words of advice, and inspects some of my work and lets me know how I'm doing. There he is. Anyway, we will uh, continue in the next video. I think there's only two left for the uh, vertical stabilizer, and then we'll move on to the rudder. So, see you soon.